sometimes we overlook is uh, the training often you know, training often covers the legal entanglements that happen uh, if, in case a defensive shooting were to go down. As far as carrying firearms, there's a few states out there that we call permissive. We call it May issue. The, the, the police department or the sheriff's department gets a chance to look you up and down and say, nah, you don't get one. You don't qualify. Or yeah, you're all right. There's, we can't find anything wrong with you. And, and they do that on, on like, I don't know if they do it on likability or you know, do you comb your hair or you fall. <laughs> Political contributions. Are you famous? Do you have a lot of money? So most states are a shall issue. You meet a fixed set of legal requirements. You pass a background check. You show that you have the training if that's what's required in that state, and you get your license. A couple of states that have no license. But Illinois remains no issue. Illinois, I'm sorry, Wisconsin, now, their attorney general ruled last year that they have open carry by means of the provisions of their state constitution. And that's something they're still working out because culturally I think there's a, there's a clash in some areas. In the western states of the United States, open carry is part of the culture. And, and uh, uh, people have grown up with that and they live with that every day and uh, they're used to seeing it. But concealed carry, that retains the element of surprise. And uh, personally, I think that makes for a safer environment. If you go into a store, restaurant, you're in a public place, you don't know who has the gun, that person is able to retain the element of surprise and come to someone's defense later if need be. We all know, right, states that allow the carrying of firearms they don't suffer a higher rate of crime because of that, right? The reverse is true. More guns, less crime. We know that citizens deserve the ability to defend themselves with the best possible tools. Now, there's people up here, they may have told you about their Florida permit, their Pennsylvania permit, their, I don't know where a permit. I don't have one. I don't have one. I really want to carry it out, but I want my permit from my home. I want my permit here in Illinois. So there's some uh, there's some more people here that are going to talk to you tonight. They're going to give you more good information. They're going to tell it to you in a way that I can't, or uh, or, or in a in a way that that's uniquely theirs. Melinda is the next speaker, and she's got a great story to tell you. Todd, Todd is the NRA's lobbyist down in Springfield, and and he's he's got a, he's got stuff to tell you about what's happening down there right now. So I want to thank you for having me here, and now I want to bring up Melinda Rowe, and she's gonna she's gonna deliver the message. We've put together quite a good working team between the different organizations involved in uh, Second Amendment rights here in the state of Illinois. We work very well together and uh, we appreciate everything that uh, Mr. Weissman does as the liaison between uh, the different groups. As he said, I am the spokesperson for IllinoisCarry.com and as such, I would like to first thank uh, Mr. Greg Powell for all of his hard work in getting this set up organizing the meeting, getting the facility, and inviting all of you here. He's a, he's a good soldier, and we appreciate him. Next, I would like to thank all of you for being here. It is, uh, let's see, is it still Thursday? I think it is. It's been quite a week. Uh, what with uh, McDonald versus Chicago and the town hall meeting last night. They get my days a little blurred together, but um, you have had a hard week too. You've been to work, 
you've had your schedules, it's a work night, and you are here. You took the time out to come because this issue is important to you, or this is an issue that you want to know more about. And I want to thank you for taking that initiative to come here tonight. You deserve a big round of applause. Well, you deserve bigger applause than that. You must be tired than I thought. <laughs> um, as I said, uh, the spokesperson for IllinoisCarry.com, that's I-L-L-I-N-O-I-S, Carry.com. And I am also a member of the Illinois State Rifle Association. And um, Illinois Carry is an organization that is dedicated to seeing a right to carry law passed in the state of Illinois. And we would like for, to invite you to join us. We also want you to know that Mr. Kenny Paul Hamus is over here at the table. And for every $20 donation that you make tonight, you will get a free T-shirt. Yes. Uh, oh, and we have, yeah. They're not modeling them, but they are they're showing the T-shirts over there. We are a complete 100% volunteer organization and every penny that anyone contributes to our organization goes to getting the word out about IllinoisCarry.com and in also um, about the right to carry in Illinois and putting on events like this all across the state. So your support is greatly appreciated. On a personal note, after having faced a very terrifying situation in my life, where I was in danger and my family was in danger. I chose to acquire the necessary skills needed to safely and responsibly handle a firearm for my own self-defense and for the defense of my loved ones. I am now dedicated to educating other women in the safe use of firearms so that they too are empowered with the ability to protect themselves and their families. I am an NRA certified handgun instructor. I am an NRA certified range safety officer. I am blessed to be one of the coordinators of Illinois Gun Owner Lobby Day. And I have to tell you, uh, it takes over my life whenever it comes to organizing an event that big and I don't regret or resent one second of it. Every second is worth seeing those people join together and march down the streets of our capital into our state building that belongs to us and to tell the people that work for us, to tell our employees in the state capital how they need to be conducting business and how they need to respect our right to protect ourselves. I have a non-resident Florida license to carry, have had it going on eight years now. And my license is recognized in 30 different states, states that trust me to carry a firearm for my own protection. But when I come home to the state of Illinois, home where I should be the safest of any place in the world, I have to stop at the state line, I have to unload my firearm, I have to completely case it up and render myself a potential victim to come back home. And that is wrong. <laughs> Just what is uh, right to carry? Or concealed carry. A lot of people know it by that term. It's qualified, responsible, trained, in most cases, there are specific law laws that require training, fingerprinting. Each state is a little bit different. But it's responsible law-abiding adults carrying a firearm to protect themselves and their families. And as the others have stated, 48 states have some sort of law already on the books. Some more restrictive than others, but 48 states have that law. Wisconsin Attorney General has ruled, according to the Wisconsin uh, state constitution, that openly carrying a firearm by law-abiding, peaceable 